Join us once more on the Minister Medico Round with Norma Ronald, Ronald Baddeley, John Graham, and the men from the Ministry, Richard Murdoch and Derek Geiler. In a changing world, the Ministry's General Assistance Department offers a bastion of the old virtues. In fact, it offers two old bastions, Lennox Brown and Lamb. <laughs> they bring traditional care and precision to modern projects, such as the development of a new aircraft. Do you think the wingspan's right, Vern? I think so, too. It should give optimum lift on takeoff, you know, plus maximum speed in operation. I, uh, I wonder about the airflow, though. Mm, the test flight should show us if that's right. Yes, right. Well, uh, open the window, then. Okay. Morning, all. Here, uh, yeah, you're not making paper darts again. <laughs> what for? Uh, uh, well, I mean, this may look like a paper dart, Mildred, but in actual fact, it's a... It's a, a well, it's a... It's cardboard a, dart. A cardboard. <laughs> yes, yes. These new file covers, you see, have splendid aerodynamic qualities. Yes, order some more from the stationery, would you? We seem to get through them in no time. You'll get into trouble chucking them things out the window, like when that traffic warden come up. Traffic warden? Well, weren't you here, sir? Hmm? Oh, he gave Mr. Lamb a right telling off. Seems he was patrolling Whitehall, and one of your darts stuck in his ear hole. <laughs> oh, poor fellow. Obviously had no sense of humour. Mm, funny chap. Some of the words he used were quite new to me. <laughs> well, he had a point, didn't he? Yes, he did. Sticking in his ear. <laughs> Pioneers have always faced criticism, Mildred. We've been helping the Aerospace Ministry while you've been away. We've been able to offer some useful advice. You mean they're going to build a giant paper dart for a hundred passengers and throw it across the Atlantic? <laughs> There's many a true word spoken in jest, Mildred. British industry needs any boost it can get. We're facing a recession. My dad says that's because the workers are always striking for shorter hours. Well, we've agreed to meet their demands. We're going to reduce each hour to 55 minutes. <laughs> we have to see that the recession doesn't develop into a depression. Or even a slump. Yes. What's the difference between a recession, a depression and a slump, then? Ah, I'm glad you asked that. A recession is when you have to tighten your belt, you see. Whereas a depression means that you've no belt to tighten. <laughs> and as a slump, you don't need a belt, because you haven't any trousers. <laughs> and that means the end's in sight. <laughs> oh, I see. I think. How did you find out about all that stuff? Ah, well, now, we've been liaisoning with young Wizard Wilkins in the next office. What he doesn't know about economics would fill an awfully large book. <laughs> Oh, um, good morning, uh, uh, oh. gentlemen. Here he is, Morris. Uh, we were just telling Mildred about our work for the aerospace industry. Yeah. What exactly did you have to do? Oh, lots of things. One job was finding ways to reduce aircraft noise and also save fuel. We suggested the plane that used no fuel at all, but they turned it down. Did they say why? They couldn't get a rubber band big enough. <laughs> Still, we came up with a marvellous plan to cut down aircraft noise. What was that, sir? You stop the passengers talking to each other. <laughs> Our main achievement was selling a new British jet engine to the United States. Oh. Ah, yes, it's to power a spacecraft they're launching from Houston in Texas. Well, I never. After all the trouble with that last rocket we sold them. Uh, yes, well, there were teething troubles with that one. Mm, I'll say. Wasn't it nicknamed the civil servant? Uh, yes, I believe it was, yeah. Mm. Oh, I remember. It was called the civil servant because it wouldn't work, they couldn't fire it, and it cost the taxpayer a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> well, this engine's different, Mildred. It's been thoroughly tested and everyone says it's a winner. Well, that's the end of our aerospace jobs. I think I'll toddle along to my club for an early lunch and a nap. Is it all right to leave the office empty? What if the permanent undersecretary comes in? Oh, I shouldn't worry, Mildred. Sir Gregory hasn't been near us for days. Aha! <laughs> Linux Brown and Lamb. Not sneaking out of the office, are you? Uh, not now, Sir Gregory. <laughs> Good. Well, I gather you've wrapped up your aerospace works. So I've found you another little job. Oh, thank you, Sir Gregory. Oh, the devil finds work for idle hands, what? Yes, sir, you you always seem to. Right. <laughs> you always seem to have our interests at heart. Uh, uh, job for British Rail this time. They're worried about their trains. Oh, dear. Our passengers falling off again. <laughs> British Rail has massive financial problems, and the chairman wants us to help. Oh, well, I wish I could, Sir Gregory, but I've only got 10p till payday. Don't be quiet, Lamb, and let me finish. Oh. 
He wants ideas to economize and to improve the British rail image. Do you know, I've often thought, sir, they could improve their image by banning timetables. Banning timetables? Hmm. Well, what good would that do? Well, the trains could be late and no one would know. <laughs> Don't be absurd, Linux Brown. What a stupid idea. Oh. What the railways need is a facelift. A facelift? You mean remove the lines? Exactly. More lines must go. It's the only way to save money. Uh, so what are we to do, sir? Well, for one thing, you're to make a survey of the rail network in the northwest region. A survey of the rail network in the northwest region. Go to every station and see which lines are and which are not economically viable. Which are and which are not economically viable. And stop repeating everything I say. You're irritating me. You're irritating me. Oh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Beg your pardon. I... There have to be sufficient cuts to say British Rail a hundred and fifty million pounds. A hundred and fifty million pounds. And now another matter. British Rail are to hold a huge exhibition to show the public how the railways are expanding. Well, won't that cost a lot of money, sir? They reckon about a hundred and fifty million. A hundred and fifty million. Well, that's why they need to cut their services. These people aren't fools, you know. Well, if you say so, sir. Well, you may be called on to help with the exhibition, but first, you're to make this survey in the Northwest. Yes. My secretary will send details of your itinerary. Thank you, sir. I want you on your way as soon as possible, but if possible, sooner. Here we are, Mr. Lennox Brown. Sir Gregory sent us the details of your itinerary. Your itinerary. Where you got to go? <laughs> yes, thank you very much, Milton. Is it very complicated? Well, there's a tricky bit here. After you've been round Cheshire, you go to Stockport by train. Yes. Then you have to go cross-country to Longhampton. Cross-country? You mean running? No. It says here you take a red bus from Stockport to Nether Stropping. Then at the Market Square, you change to a green bus, which takes you to Longhampton. Isn't there a railway through Nether Stropping? Well, there was, but it seems it was axed ten years ago. So you've got a 20-minute wait in the Market Square for the Longhampton bus. <laughs> Some twenty minutes this turned out to be. According to my watch, we've been here nearly two hours. Yes, and it would have to be raining. Still, I suppose it's good to get away from the office. This is a new Macintosh. I wouldn't have worn it if I'd known there was rain about. <laughs> Listen, think of the useful job we're doing. Oh. Three branch lines already marked for the axe. I'm also going to suggest we close up John St. Mavis. And, if it's a success, we close all the neighbouring stations. That'll really put this area on its feet. <laughs> but, oh, why are these buses so infrequent? Well, it's always the way, too. What this part of the world needs is a decent train service. Quite right. Even so, this is no time to start doing your train imitations. That wasn't me, one. Huh? That was a train. Listen. Good grief. You're right. It is a train. Yes, look. Over there. That's mm. odd. Mildred said this line was closed down years ago. And judging from all that steam, it must be an old-fashioned puffer. Either that or the driver's a very heavy smoker. <laughs> that must be the old station over there. Yes, come on, two. We'd better go and see what's going on. I say, what a funny little station. Well, it's certainly not closed, is it? I mean, look, there's a budgie's cage in the booking office. And flowers and the fire buckets. Yo-ho! Anyone in? Afternoon, gents. What can I do for you? I'm a station master here. Pullman's the name. Uh, we're from Whitehall, Mr. Pullman. Oh, dear, oh, dear. You both look wet. We wish to know why that steam engine's standing out there. <laughs> well, it would look pretty daft in here, wouldn't it? <laughs> that is not the point, Mr. Pullman. This station should be closed. Oh, it isn't half past six yet, is it? Mr. Pullman, this station and branch line were axed ten years ago and the staff were made redundant. There's a strange enigma here. Oh, you don't worry, sir. That's the wife. <laughs> I'll uh, call her over. Emily, come and meet the pretty gentleman from London. All right, all right, I'm coming. You'll have to excuse her, sir. She's not been the same since she was decimalised. <laughs> oh, here she comes. This is Emily, sir. She runs the refreshment room. I'm pleased to meet you. And this is our son, Seth. Oh, do. <laughs> he runs uh, around. Uh, yes, well, we were saying, madam, that we thought you were redundant. Me? At my age? Don't be so daft. It's just the way me coat hangs. <laughs> <laughs> No, your service was terminated years ago. No, no, sir. We only wanted the one young Seth here. I do. He's a good lad, but not very bright. 
We put him down for the civil service. Oh, do. <laughs> of course, he can be a problem. Orders were given to close down this railway. Now, why weren't they carried out? Well, sir, we kept it going like as a family concern. You kept it going, but you're not allowed to run a private railway. It's flouting government instructions. And flaunting contempt for the law. Oh, we didn't mean to float and float, sir. No, we kept it going as a service for all the local computers. They got compute to Longhampton every day. Yes, if it weren't for us, Longhampton would be cut off. Think of the grief that it caused. We can't let the public down, sir. The public? Well, what have they got to do with it? This line was closed because it was losing money. Oh, well, it ain't no, sir. <laughs> We're the only railway in the country making a profit. Ask anyone. Ask Seth. Oh, do. <laughs> well, no, don't ask Seth, but ask anyone else. We are making money. It's all in the family, see? I take the tickets and drive the engine. Uncle Ebenezer, he does the points and the maintenance. We keep the fares nice and cheap. They're cheap fares? This is monstrous. Our trains run in time. It's unthinkable. And we're making a nice little pile. I've heard enough. I've heard enough. You can't run the railway and make a profit. No, no, no. We, we can't allow it. We won't allow it. We're closing this station for good. Absolutely. You're misusing government property. That engine out there belongs to British Rail. I mean, to turn it to them at once. If you take away our engine, we're entitled to condensation. <laughs> quite right, quite right, Emily. Now, don't argue, Mr. Pullman. You're the driver. Get out there and start that engine. We'd better go with him and see that he does. We certainly shall. We shall ride with you, Mr. Pullman, while you take that engine to the British Rail Station at Milchester. There you will hand it over to the authorities. Oh, well, I'll have to do as they say, Emily. Well, we had a good run for our money, I suppose. I'll be back as soon as I can. Look after your mother, Seth. Oh, do. <laughs> oh, glorious. Come on, let's get out of here and get that engine moving. There you are. She started up. Lovely head of steam, that. She certainly seems to be going all right. Yes, and I'll be doing the same. <laughs> You're on your own now, you pair of pinstripe banana. Oh, oh. 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 Grief, he's jumped off. It, come back here at once, you... Oh, he isn't going to one. He's left us alone here on purpose. He thinks we can't drive the engine. He thinks we're going to crash. Oh, don't panic, too. What are you thinking of? I think he's right. No, oh, no, not since I'm quite capable of driving a train. I, I wanted to be an engine driver, you know, when I was a lad. It all looks so complicated. No, 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 no. Not at all, no. It's just like driving a car. Now, this is only a branch line, so there'll be no other traffic about it. And it can't be more than, what, ten miles to Milchester? I'll drive you with the fireman. Right. Yes. I think I might enjoy this, you know. Joe, do I have had such fun for years? Speeding along with the wind in our bowler hats, watching the telegraph poles whiz by. <laughs> what could be more pleasant, eh? It's all right for you, one. It's not much fun for me, heaving coal about in my vest. Oh, I will use a shovel instead. Oh. <laughs> now, go on. Let's have another go on the whistle. Oh. One, you said Milchester was only ten miles, but we've been travelling at least two hours. Ah, yes. Well, I mean, that's because rail travel is very deceptive, too. We're doing 70 miles an hour. Really? How do you know? It says so on that dial. Good Lord, you know, I thought that was the clock. <laughs> I wondered why it was stuck at 20 to 8. <laughs> could you slow down a bit? Well, I could slow down if I wanted to, I suppose. But, I mean, we're perfectly safe on this branch line. I'm not sure we're still on the branch line. Of course we are. I mean... What makes you say that? That notice over there. Caution, main line, London to Glasgow. What? It can't be the main line. There'd be other trains about. Oh, that could have been another train one, but it went by so fast I couldn't really see. Uh, yes, well, we, we may have missed our way. Uh, do you know how to stop this thing? Well, of course I know how to stop. Yes, I'll pull this... Red lever, that'll, that, that, that'll bring us to a halt in no time. Yeah. Oh, we're going even faster. Oh, yes. Well, I'll try these levers then. It's no good. We're out of control. But do something, too. Don't just yes, stand, stand there fighting. Do, do something. And here is the news read by Brian Martin. 
There's been chaos on British Rail today with an unidentified steam engine running loose on the mainline network. An eyewitness account has been given by the first man to see the engine, the driver of the Glasgow to London Express, 25-year-old, white-haired Albert Craig. <laughs> he saw the engine travelling head-on towards him near Crewe, but was able to avoid a collision by reversing his train at high speed all the way back to Glasgow. <laughs> Trains from London to Scotland are now being rerouted via Penzance. <laughs> Some delays were expected. Later, the runaway engine was seen in places as far apart as Middlesbrough, Bath, Ramsgate, and the Bakerloo Underground. <laughs> the two men on the footplate are said to be wild-eyed and waving their arms about. It's thought they're middle-aged dropouts making a protest. <laughs> and here's some late news... The rogue engine is now said to have left the rails near Barnsley and to be heading south down the M1. <laughs> oh, you seem angry, Sir Gregory. I am not just angry, Lennox Brown. I am absolutely beside myself. We can only apologize to both of you, sir. Oh, be quiet, then. <laughs> I send you to carry out a simple survey and you end up driving a steam locomotive down the M1 leaving it on the hard shoulder outside the service station. Why, in heaven's name, why? We wanted to pop in for a cup of tea. <laughs> You're a pair of irresponsible, useless, half-witted, silly bunglers. Ooh. I had to save this department's reputation by, by saying the whole thing was a publicity stunt for the Euston Rail Exhibition. Oh, that was very astute of you, sir, yes. Were British Rail pleased? Oh, yes, as a matter of fact, they were. As part of the festivities, they're running a special train from Houston to Darlington, where steam trains started. The British Rail chairman has decided your engine should pull it. Oh, I say, so it's all worked out rather well. No, thanks to you two. However, you can make amends by arranging for that locomotive to be sent to Houston immediately. It shall be done, sir. Uh, yes. When does this Darlington run take place? Oh, Tuesday afternoon. It's a very big affair. All the top people will be there. The PM, Minister of Transport, and I shall be there, of course. Of course, yes. yes of course. I shall be making my usual contribution to these occasions. Uh, not while the train's standing at the station, I hope. <laughs> It should be a grand scene of the station. Uh, indeed, yes. It'll be a very big day for British Rail. Yes, well, won't the journey take rather a long time, sir, with just a steam locomotive? <laughs> the longer the better. There's plenty of food and drink on board. Oh. Now, have that thing transported to them at once. Get it? Got, got it. it. Good. I were, too. I believe we've got away with it. When he came in, I thought he was going to strangle us. I haven't seen such a cross face since Auntie Flo caught her chest in the mangle. <laughs> well, you better not make any more mistakes or any murderers. There's, uh, there's nothing we've overlooked, is there? I don't think so. I see from my diary that the American aerospace people are due to ring us today to confirm they've received that jet thing we sent them. Oh, yes, that's right, yes, yes. I'll feel easier in my mind when I've heard from them. Their phone operators are half daft. One of them rang just now and said it's a long distance from America. Uh, a long distance from America? Yeah, I just said I know that, and I'm up. Um, <laughs> you, you hung up, you silly... The, that was the American Aerospace Agency. We're waiting. We're waiting for their call, Mildred. Wait. Yeah, you, uh, that'll be them trying again. Yes, well, go back to your office, Mildred. Go on, go on, go back and put the call... Listen, listen, put the call through to me. All right, right. don't make the pinstripes in a twist. Oh, I say, isn't nature wonderful to think that we can talk direct to someone in the United States? Yeah. You're through now, sir. Thank you, Mildred, thank you. Yes. Hello! Lennox Brown speaking. Can you hear me? Do you speak English? This is Dwight J. White here in Houston, Texas. I am contacting you telephonically to ascertain the as-of-now whereabouts of the jet engine we ordered. A uh, jet engine, Mr. J. White? Uh, you mean it hasn't arrived? Negative. No, not. I have instigated thorough inquiries, and we are now cognizant of the fact that it is still at the factory. The, the jet engine is still at the factory? Affirmative. I am informatized that dispatch was inoperative due to your failure to activate a clearance note. A clearance note? I'd be obligated if you would precipitate a clearance note and achieve an in-transit situation for this engine forthwith. Oh, Joe, this fellow doesn't speak English. <laughs> and he's rung off. Yeah. 
Two, that jet engine's still at the factory. Now, get Mildred to issue a clearance note and dispatch the thing at once. Now, go and tell her right away. Good. And while she's at it, she can get that old steam locomotive sent to Houston. <laughs> Well, Sir Gregory, you do look smart in that morning suit. Well, thank you, Anna. One tries to dress for the occasion, you know. I've never seen anything like it. You do look uh, extremely sartorial. Good, good. And you don't see anything ridiculous in my top hat? Only your head. <laughs> I said, Billy, go ahead, sir. Oh. Yes. Well, this Darlington trip is a great event, and so is the whole exhibition. Well, we thought we might go down there this afternoon. Oh, by all means, by all means, tell you what, in the circumstances, you can leave the office ten minutes early. Oh, now, that's very generous of you, Sir Gregory. Well, you. I'm in a good mood today. Yes, sir. I shall enjoy this trip, you know, return to the gracious days of steam travel, a, a leisurely ride through the English countryside with plenty of good food and wine. <laughs> Yes, should I be looking forward to this exhibition, too? Yes, I was almost something of a railway buff. Really? Mm. Yes, I've collected platform tickets for years, you know. Platform tickets have gone up in price, haven't they? Oh, yes, but you can still get your money's worth. There's a longer wait between trains. <laughs> Hello, Lennox Brown. Hello, this is Mr. Clouston at Houston. I'm the uh, exhibition organiser. Oh, hello, Mr. Clouston. Yes, everything going smooth, are you? Well, the exhibition's doing very well, but I'm a bit concerned about this afternoon's trip to Darlington. I'm afraid I have qualms. Oh, you can get tablets for that, you know. <laughs> Travel sickness pills, you'll be all right. Mm. No, 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 is this engine you've sent us to pull the train? Hmm? Are you sure it's right for the purpose? Oh, yes, yes. It may seem a little unorthodox, but, I mean, that's part of the attraction, isn't it? You know, it was, it was a very high-level decision. Oh, well, then I suppose we must accept it. We are having to adapt the engine. That is the engine to use, Mr. Clifton. Uh, what about? Oh, some chap at Houston fussing about using the old steam engine. They used to diesel, of course. I had to be oh, you know. right, right. Yeah. Well, I think an early lunch is called for. And I can have a little nap this afternoon before we go down to Houston. lunch, sir, but there was a bit of trouble in the canteen. Mr. Wilkins upset that new manageress. Oh, really, Mildred? Yeah. He said he didn't like the look of her dumplings. <laughs> what did she say? She said she didn't like his sauce. Here, I wondered if I could have the afternoon off, sir. It's me mum's birthday today, and I want to buy her some tights. Oh, that'll be a surprise for her. Yeah, she's expecting a tea service. <laughs> yes, well, if your work is up to date, Mildred, I think we could just stretch a point there. Oh, everything's in hand, sir. Oh. They confirmed that jet engine was delivered to Houston. Good, well, then, if you could... J jet engine? J Houston? Mildred, I told you to send it to Houston. Houston, Houston. What's the difference? About 4,000 miles. Houston's in Texas. Good grief. They use that jet on the Darlington train. No wonder they've had to adapt it. It's intended for a space rocket. And they'll think we told them to use it on the train. What are we going to do? Do? Well, we're going down to Houston and, and stop them. That's what we're going to do. I mean, the train's due to leave in oh, ten yes, minutes. Yes. The whole thing's on TV. <laughs> Well, viewers, as you've probably gathered, this is Fourth Robinson here. And I'm at Houston Station for the Great British Rail Exhibition. Today's highlight will be the departure of a rather special train from London to Darlington. But while the Prime Minister and the other VIPs are boarding it, let's look at some other attractions. In the buffet, there's a display of 19th century buns and rock cakes. <laughs> As indeed there is every day. <laughs> and in the travel center, there's a collection of railway art, including several studies of British rail porters in the still life section. <laughs> and beside me here, you can see one of British rail's new posters. It's urging southern region commuters not to pick flowers off the hedges while the train is in motion. <laughs> Uh -huh. And now I see the Darlington train is ready to leave. Everyone safely aboard and the guard raises his flag. But what's this? Two bowler-hearted men are running across the platform, shouting. And, and, and they've vaulted the barrier. And now one's being chased by the railway police. Aha! Uh -huh. And they've grabbed him by the buffers. <laughs> 
And the others climbed on the roof of the train and seems to be shouting, the engine, the engine, but the guard has waved his flag and the train's about to leave. My <laughs> word, it's already left. <laughs> One could almost say it shot off like a rocket. More dramatic news from British Rail. A special train today covered the 230 miles from London to Darlington in under four minutes. <laughs> and this feat was achieved without actually touching the rails. <laughs> Passengers, however, complained of a lack of comfort, having been drenched in mushroom soup and hurled into the luggage rack. <laughs> On arriving in Darlington, top civil servant Sir Gregory Pitkin was rushed to hospital red-eyed and shaking. He was said to be suffering from rail lag. <laughs> a junior Whitehall executive, Richard Lamb, was later found suspended in a mailbag catcher outside Doncaster. <laughs> he had a label round his neck reading second class mail and said he couldn't think how he'd got into this mesh. <laughs> Poor Sir Gregory. You say he has to have an operation? Yes, they're trying to remove a British rail fork from his left nostril. <laughs> When he gets back, he'll tear us limb from limb. Not necessarily, Mildred. The idea's got round that giving that train a jet engine was a government experiment. Will they keep the idea? No, they've decided that having British rail trains move quickly would be too much of a shock to the public. <laughs> so everything's back to normal. Oh, except uh, that American chap rang while you was out. He's a bit worried about that engine we sent him. Oh, glory. He got the steam engine. The new American space rocket will be going puff, puff, puff all the way to the moon. <laughs> and where will they get the coal to make the journey back? Oh, I oh, see. Oh, 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 oh